Hi, this is Brian with The Balanced Dog, and today I want to talk about leashes, and especially the ones I prefer to use, and then the other ones that are out on the market as well, and uh, the pros and cons. So if I'm going to clip in to a, a collar, say like a martingale or a pinch collar, I, I go with the leather leashes by Texas Leash Company, or I believe leashcity.com is, is also one of their websites. And they make custom lengths. Uh, this is a two-footer. Uh, it's got a nice beefy clasp on it. And uh, I, I like the, the width of this leash. I don't like a lot of material in my hand. And it's significantly strong enough to handle uh, any dog, for that matter. So, the Texas Leash Company, um, that's my pref pre preference when I'm going to clip into a collar. Um, some of the leashes I see a lot of clients, or people in general, use are these. these um, they're, they're too wide, so they're too bulky. Uh, it's nylon, so if the dog bolts on you, it rips through your hand, it, it'll burn. Uh, it's got a huge clasp, and it's also got what I call the oh Jesus handle. So if somebody has a reactive dog and they see a dog coming, they, they grab a hold of this and hang on for dear life. So um, those are just kind of two clip-in leashes, but again, I prefer the leather ones from Texas Leash Company. Slip leashes. Um, this is just a regular old vet lead. Um, it's pretty much good just for taking a dog from a kennel to another kennel or, or whatever. They're not very durable, not very strong, so not very reliable. Not good for training. There is this sort of slip lead, English slip lead. Um, in order to terminate the rope to create the handle, they have to basically take this leather and then they pinch the rope together and then they stitch it in place by using this leather coupler, I guess you can call that. But over time, the stitching starts to come undone and then this leather opens up and so it um, affects the integrity of the leash. And they do the same down here for the loop. And it's a soft rope, but it's kind of a, feels cotton, cottony, but a, a, probably a nylon cotton blend. But you can see that it's just woven to create this core very soft core that um, you know most likely is going to snag and then start to fray apart and they tend to get kind of these big lumps you know as uh, the use you know there's more usage on them it's got a leather keeper uh, it's pretty firm but they tend to loosen up over time because the rope starts to degrade and it softens up more and more so but that's just an English slip lead this is another type of English slip lead. It's basically, it's like a large version of the ski rope vet leads. And again, this is just taken, this is more of a nylon rope, um, not great quality, but it's just woven again into this unprotected core. So again, this can all get snagged and uh, over time starts to pull apart. Same thing as the other leash, except they're using nylon, like a nylon material, and they sandwich the rope in here and then they stitch it. Um, as far as a, a keeper goes, it has this big kind of bulky plastic keeper with kind of a weak spring in it, and uh, there's not a lot of tension on it, so it slides fairly easy. And I can just see a dog chewing on that and breaking it, or stepping on it and breaking on it, uh, breaking it, and then you basically just have a, a slip lead with no keeper. So. This is a Lucas Agnew slip lead. This is my preference. So you can see, hey Hoku, uh, the rope's terminated with this knot, so we don't have any bulky leather or nylon going over and stitching to hold it in place. So it keeps it very streamlined, which is what we like with our leashes. They're very lightweight and they're very streamlined. And you can see we have a knot up here as well to terminate the, the loop there. And we also added this backup so when you use the power loop, which I'll show you in a second, Hoku's around here somewhere. And then we have a leather keeper that's pretty stiff when you first get it, but over some time it'll loosen up. And if it ever gets too loose to where it doesn't uh, have its effect anymore, we just swap the leash out. So that is the Lucas Agnew slip leash. And we also have the Lucas Agnew dynamic long lines as well. So they're 15 foot, but it's basically just like the slip lead. And the reason why we call them dynamic is because the rope has some give to them. And it's basically a Kern mantle rope, uh, just designed and built just like a climbing rope. 
It's basically thousands of strands of nylon rope that are woven into a core, right? And then it's covered with a mantle or a sheath, which is the red part. So this way the core doesn't get snagged or take the abuse of the weather and the sun. This is what's protecting it. This is why our leashes last so long. So that is it for leashes. Let me show you really quick on how you do the, the power loop. Hoku. Hoku doesn't have a collar on, but what you do is you just take a big loop out. Thank you. And then you make one little figure eight twist down here at the bottom. And it goes over the muzzle like that. And then you want to center the, the brass ring up right between the dog's ears. So you can just kind of slide that and then slide the tab down in place. Now this backup, Edie's making sure I'm doing it right, this backup would clip into the dog's flat collar. So in case they ever paw paw at this and they pop this loop off and you're not paying attention, there's a lot of slack that the dog can back out of the, out of the leash. So that's it for leashes. Hope that helps. Lucas Agnew Dynamic Slip Lead and Long Lines, lucasagnew.com. And Edie, thank you for showing up. Hoku, thank you for modeling it. Get some leashes, get out there and work your dogs.